We're playing a new game called Sampled or Stolen. Ooh. Oh. In each round, we will play clips of two songs, one of which an artist was sued by another for plagiarism. Oh. And you must decide if that artist stole that song or if it's just a mere coincidence and that's their own original sample. You decide. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> the first case we have is Ed Sheeran versus Marvin Gaye. On August 10th, 2016, the family of Ed Townsend, who co-wrote Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On, sued Ed Sheeran, alleging that the melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic compositions of Thinking Out Loud were strikingly similar to the drum composition of Let's Get It On. So let's see, here's Thinking Out Loud. Will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? This song kind of gives me a depression. I can already, I'm, I'm hearing Marvin Gaye. I, Cause I'm just, I, that's all I'm thinking about right now. I love Ed Sheeran, dude. He's so talented. Yeah. This was like a top, top, top song. He's a weird, he looks like a gremlin. I'm not gonna lie. I remember seeing him in Hollywood before he became who he is. Okay, I can now hear it a little bit. I'm going back and forth because now I'm putting Ed Sheeran's lyrics over, over his backtrack. The beat. Oh. Same chords? Yeah, same, same yeah. chords. It's like four chords, right? The root of music is Marvin Gaye and like that style of music. Like everyone pulls from that. Oh. I don't know, it, it's much different to me. Like when I hear them, especially next to each other, I didn't think that it was that similar. Do you think Ed Sheeran stole Marvin Gaye's melody? Or was he merely sampling the common pop song? Personally, I think it was sampled because half of like all pop songs have the same chord progression. If you get the business done, then we can say that it was sampled. That's mm -hmm. okay. Wait, but so what happened? Like he just didn't ask them? Heck or? no, that's the reason why he got the lawsuit. I think sampled. Woo! Not going to jail yet. <laughs> Not yet anyway. <laughs> The case was held by a jury in New York City in 2023, and it found in favor of Ed Sheeran. Yay! So after we had the trial, Ed Sheeran said these chords are, like I said, common building blocks, which were used to create music long before Let's Get It On, and it will be used to create music long after we are all gone. Even if his argument is, oh, there was songs prior to then and there'll be songs prior long gone, that's fine, totally fine. But point me in the direction of what those other songs sound like outside of Mr. Marvin Gaye. Then mm -hmm. I'll be quiet. So, round two, we have The Verve versus The Rolling Stones. The song in questioning is Bittersweet Symphony. The Verve negotiated rights to use the Rolling Stones song last time as a sample. So they got approved by the record company. However, they did not obtain permission from the Rolling Stones' former manager, who owned the copyrights to uh, the Rolling Stones' pre-1970 songs, which included the last time. And according to Verve's guitarist, the dispute actually didn't depend on the sample, but rather the vocal melody. Mm, that's difficult then. Good song. I really like this song. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> oh, of course I know this. Why is he bumping into everybody on the way? <laughs> Watch where you're going. Okay, I hear it. The first one's like a halftime version. Of the Rolling Stones. It's the same, but it's the, his, they're it's the more. It's the cadence. It's just like the cadence. Up. Yeah, it's the cadence is just, yeah, different. But it's the same. Yeah. Did they really think they were gonna get away with that? That sucks. Because honestly, like, if you had just showed me these two, mm -hmm. I would say they're totally different songs. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they kind of screwed themselves over by asking for the first, like, permission. Did the verb stick to the sample agreement? Or were the vocals stolen from the Rolling Stones? Sampled or stolen? Now, honestly, I, I do feel like stolen would be the answer. I feel like it's a problem only because they got cleared for it, but then they didn't. I would have to say that they stole it because it's so similar to the yeah. other one. Out of all the samples that you hear, that one was pretty yeah, identical. Yeah. <laughs> well, the verdict stands. Following a lawsuit, the verb relinquished all royalties to the former manager, and the songwriting credits were changed to Jagger and Richards. And the vocal singer of the verb only received $1,000 in royalties. Damn. So they got stolen. They got stolen. Damn. 
That sucks. Mm. That's a really good song. That is messed up, dude. Wow. It is. It, it what a snake ass way to go through that. You know what I mean? You see, this is why it's like stolen with sadness. Mm -hmm. He deserved better. We have Kanye West versus a group called Thunder and Lightning. The song in question is Kanye West's Gold Digger. In April of 2013, singer David Pryor's children filed a copyright infringement lawsuit against Kanye West for allegedly stealing the get down chants from his band Thunder and Lightning in their song, Bumpin' Bus Stop. You take my money, well I'm in need. Yes, it's a trifling friend indeed. The song is so oh, good. Oh, <laughs> and I'm in need. Yeah. That digs on me. Huh. Yeah, like still today, I would bump to this, you know, like they could play this anywhere and I would still get down. <laughs> get down, so girl, like, go ahead, sitting in the back of my mom's car. Get down, girl, go ahead, get down. Go we got the bus up, never the bus stop. Step up. No, no. completely different things. It's very hard to just compare that. I'm not hearing it yet. No. <laughs> like at all. <laughs> wait, that's the whole one? That's the, wait. What are, the, what are they claiming they stole? They're claiming that they stole the scratches of Get Down. Yeah, where was the Get Down? I was looking for that down. <laughs> and I thought maybe I was listening wrong. Maybe I should have been listening to it. Give me money. But I was like. Oh yeah, no, that didn't hit there. None of that. Yeah, I really think it's like, couldn't be more different, honestly. <sighs> So, did Kanye West just stick to sampling Ray Charles, or did he steal those get down chants from Thunder and Lightning? Sampled or stolen? Sampled. Sampled. <laughs> yeah. I wish Sampled. I could hear it. Like, you know, yeah. I wish I could be like, yeah, he totally stole that, but I really don't. I, it's. For sure. It, it can't not be sampled. In August of 2014, a federal judge threw out the majorities of the claim, insisting that the distorted short samples meant the work could not be easily recognized, so it went in favor of Kanye West. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, I promise you these ears are on. And... I did not hear down. Yeah, somebody just paid a bunch of lawyer fees for no reason. We have Sam Smith versus Tom Petty. The song in question is Stay With Me. So, Tom Petty's publisher contacted Sam Smith's team after it noticed a likeliness between Stay With Me and the melody of Tom Petty's 1989 song, I Won't Back Down. Sam Smith defended themselves, saying that they never heard of I Won't Back Down before writing Stay With Me. But is that true? Mm, I feel like it is. These nights never seem to go to plan. Oh my god, he looks so young here. I don't want you to leave. Sam Smith's career has is like a roller coaster. Oh, won't you stay with me? Why? I love this era. It's great. So Maybe different. A more even though it's sunny outside, where the song will never like get old, you know? Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, this was stolen. Come on now. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh you stay with me. It wasn't, yeah. Tough. I hear it. Yeah, it's yeah. plain as day. Boom, back down. <laughs> yeah, we heard it. Wow. Whoa, back, back down. down. Sampled or stolen? I think. <gasps> rap. I mean, no, there's no way that that was like stolen. I think it's a different beat. It's a different like set of lyrics. It's its own thing. Somebody, somebody knew. knew. Yeah, because it, it was pretty identical. Yeah. I'm not going to blame it on Sam, but somebody knew. His ghostwriter knew. I think this was obviously he searched the song up and said, I really like this, <laughs> and I'm going to pretend I just didn't hear it. So I agree. As I mentioned before, according to Sam Smith, they had never heard I Won't Back Down before writing Stay With Me. But they acknowledged the similarity after listening to the song and said the likeness was a complete coincidence. And Tom Petty received a 12.5% songwriting credit. Let's go. Oh, Come on. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really good, considering that many people that were a part of writing that. So stolen. So stolen. Oh. It's almost impossible to not hear the similarities. Tom Petty wasn't in the room right. when they were making this song. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's where in the industry it gets so gray and such a fine line of like mm -hmm. who's a songwriter and who's not. But this is the Flaming Lips versus Cat Stevens. 
fight test by the Flaming Lips were thought to be musically similar to Cat Stevens' father and son, and it resulted in a lawsuit. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was smart, I thought I was right, I thought it better not to fight, I thought... His lips are not flaming. <laughs> okay. Okay. How can I try to explain when I do, he turns away? Oh, that's pretty identical. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's spot on. The the chord progression. It's always the chord progression. Like it sounds like it's almost like a cover. Yeah. Like the Flaming Lips like did their own cover. No, I. Oof, that's that's difficult. I, that's again. That is more of like an Ed Sheeran situation. The Flaming Lips frontman claims that he was unaware of the song's similarities until a producer pointed it out, and he said, and I quote, "I'm really sorry that Cat Stevens thinks I purposely plagiarized his work. There is obviously a fine line between inspired and stealing. But if anyone wanted to borrow a part of the Flaming Lips song, I don't think I'd bother pursuing it. I've got better things to do." Ooh, it's like, oh, I wouldn't do that. So why would you? Sort of thing. I. That sounds. That sounds scummy. Do you believe Fight Test was its own sample? Or do you think it stole from Cat Stevens? That was like right, so come identical. On, right. Come on, bro. It was like the same song. Yeah, I think there's a case there too. I think sample. Uh, chord progressions on guitar are very hard to like distinguish. Yeah, to make yeah. different. Following a settlement with the Flaming Lips, Cat Stevens received 75% of the royalties from Fight Test. And the frontman ended up confessing. He said, there was a time during the recording session when we said, this has a similarity to father and sons, and we purposely changed those bits. But you want to be cocky and all, you got better things Yeah, they got to pull that petty. Like, they knew they are doing... So he was guilty. He knew it. Oh, <laughs> guilty as charged. He knew it. Are we ready for the last one? Yep. Mm -hmm. The song in questioning is Blurred Lines. Marvin Gaye's family in 2013 accused a Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams song, Blurred Lines, of copying the feel and sound of Got to Give It Up. Here we go! <laughs> Robin Thicke is so Robin Thicke. <laughs> Oh gosh, I hate I'm that it's nervous. catchy. That's so frustrating. Maybe I'm going deaf. Maybe I'm going blind. Maybe I'm out of my mind. Oh, that's so I mean, it's, it's, yeah. I feel like a lot of Robin Thicke's sound is definitely from Marvin Gaye. You know? mm, I, I hear it a little bit. Very similar. Like a very prominent bass It's like bass the line. same instruments, you know? I don't think it doesn't, he has that style of oh, He always yeah. has the falsetto. Yeah. It's like almost identical to Once it switched over to the next song, I wasn't like, oh, this is the same song. But it was like, oh, these have a lot of similarities. Like the same components. Mm -hmm. Sampled or stolen. Sampled. I think it was heavily influenced and heavily maybe inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with sampled. Yeah. I mean, it's very, but I do see you. If yours, I, I wouldn't be surprised. The unanimous jury awarded Gay's family $7.4 million in damages for copyright infringement and credited Marvin Gaye as a songwriter for Blurred Lines. Though many disagreed really with the verdict, since Blurred Lines and Gotta Give It Up were only similar in feel and genre. I hate how wish washy everyone is with like lyrics. Songwriter? You mean like maybe, maybe a couple points as like composer? Nothing wrong with being inspired. I give them that. But you know where that inspiration came from. Come on, like, let's keep you it a bug. Know. As a songwriter and a singer as well, I write with a lot of people. But you have to remember who contributed to this. And now we have an extra layer of like, who already made this song before? You're gonna be inspired. There's so much music out there. You might as well just you. give the credit. Thanks for watching this episode. Where do you stand in these rulings? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to more React videos. Bye.